Hey guys, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. I'm here in my garden. I just picked some amazing food I wanted to show you guys. Look at these, look at these red things. You guys know what that is? That's the flower off my banana palm. So my banana's fruited and I have clusters of bananas at the base is this flower. So if you guys subscribe to my channel, tomorrow's episode here at Vegan Athlete, I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna eat this. For now, I'm gonna put this to the side, put it in the fridge, and have a delicious banana flower meal tomorrow. So I have a little secret to tell you guys, and the secret is that I totally get high off my garden. <laughs> okay, not from gardening, from actually eating the food. I grow certain plants that get me high, but not in the way you're thinking. I get messaged all the time on my Snapchat, my Instagram, and down in the comments, Jake, do you grow marijuana in your garden? And the answer is no, because it's illegal still in my area, and if I got caught, I could lose my entire garden. Now, if it became legal, I would do it because there's a lot of nutritional value to consuming the marijuana leaves. Juicing them, cooking them, putting them in salads, etc., etc., etc. You don't just have to get high off that plant. But for now, I don't do it because you know the law says it's still illegal. But you know that law is all just a bunch of BS because it's mostly corporate interests that want to keep marijuana as a class one drug. If you guys do a little bit of research, you'll find that certain lobbies, like the cotton lobby, etc., etc., they made hemp and marijuana illegal to try to corner the market. And I'm really against having plants be illegal. If it's a plant or a tree, it should be a human right as a free society to grow your own medicine and food at home in your front and your backyard. The reason why I say I get high out of my garden is because whenever I have friends come over, I've done this multiple times, and I give my friends a Jake Mace vegan athlete salad out of my garden, they sometimes reluctantly eat it, and 10 minutes later, they're walking around my house completely buzzed, <laughs> their eyes are open wide, and they're totally buzzed and totally high. So I wanted to show you guys the salad I make my guests today. Hopefully you'll get some ideas on how to make a kick-ass salad for you at home. I'm gonna show you guys what leafy greens and herbs I put on the salad, and then what dressings I put on it to make it delicious. And I have a special drink to juice right in front of you guys at the end of this video, so stick with me until the end. I got my Hori Hori gardening knife right here. Let's get inside the main garden and pick some veg. Longevity spinach. Lacinato, AKA dinosaur kale. I got a whole raised bed of dinosaur kale. Beautiful. This red leafy green is called Mizuna. This is some fresh dill. <laughs> These are beet greens. The beet is edible and the greens are edible. Even though it's February, we still have sweet peppers and they are oh so sweet. This is bok choy that's gone to flour and we eat the flowers and the greens. If you guys subscribe to my channel in two days from now, on Saturday's video, I'm gonna harvest this entire bed of Napa cabbage and make about a dozen jars of homemade kimchi. For now, I'm gonna steal a leaf of this beautiful Napa cabbage for this salad. This is the forest of mint. This mint looks amazing. I've got a miniature bed of celery going. When you guys grow it yourself, you can eat the leaves and the stalks. It's so fresh and so much sweeter than the store. This plant is called Borage and it puts off blue flowers that the bees love. Look at that bee on there. And I'm gonna take a few bee. We'll share with the bees. And not only will this add nutrients to our salad, but it will be an incredible looking garnish on top that'll bring some beauty. This green is really special. It's called New Zealand spinach, and it just keeps growing year after year. I don't plant it, it reseeds itself. It's one of my favorite plants. It's a bunch of bulbs of fennel. And of course, you can eat the fennel bulb, but I just leave the bulb in the ground and I harvest it for the greens, and it tastes just like black licorice. 
Oh, so powerful. I've got my own star fruit trees and look at how they're fruiting. The fruit's almost ready. And down here. And above the star fruit is this incredible tree called Moringa. And I'm going to harvest some leaves of the Moringa because they're one of the most nutritious foods on the planet. Here's my presentation for you guys. I'm gonna do this outside because then I have an easier cleanup. There are five reasons why my friends, my family get high off the food I grow in my garden. Number one is because of my soil. I put worm castings and compost and rock dust minerals that have a plethora of different trace elements and minerals inside of the soil. Therefore, the plants drink that up and when I eat the food, it's remineralized. Way more minerals and more nutrition than even the healthiest organic produce you would buy at a healthy store like Whole Foods. Number two is that I'm picking the food and eating it right away. There's no shipping, there's no waiting. It's being picked, put in the bowl, and going into my body, and so it's fully potent with all of its nutrients. Number three is that I'm growing varieties of food you don't find in the store. So my system, my blood, my organs, my muscles, my metabolism, my entire health is fueled by rare foods like Mizuna and different varieties of peppers and borage. So my system is being bombarded with a variety of nutrients and a variety of plant life. Number four, I'm picking the food in its fully ripe state. I don't have an agenda or a corporation to answer to. I don't have to make money off my food, which usually leads companies to pick the food when it's not ripe so that it ships better and it can ripen on its way to market. I'm picking mine in its fully ripe state and that is incredibly important if you wanna get high off your food and get a flood of nutrients to your system. And number five, I'm putting love into this stuff, man. I'm putting love into it. And so when you eat the food that you grow, it's always gonna make you feel better. And then an unofficial sixth reason is that since all my food is being grown locally in my area, my immune system and my muscles and my organs and my metabolism and my brain is now eating food that grew in the conditions and the environment that I'm living in. For instance, if you eat food that comes from Maine, but you live in Arizona, it's not as good as eating food that was grown in Arizona if you live in Arizona. So I'm getting an immune system, I'm getting a body that is well suited to fight the area that I live in. And now I'm living in harmony with my hometown. Stick with me to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you guys my special drink. What I do to make my salad is I take the biggest leaves and put them on the bottom. I don't need to wash anything because I got no bugs on my greens and I don't use anything on my leaves like chemicals. So I can just eat it in its natural state. I take all the big leaves and I put them on the bottom. And I'm gonna make a Jake Mace Vegan Athlete Spring Roll. I always just check each leaf to make sure there's not like a little green worm or something. So far, we're clean. And look at that celery, it looks so good. And I get to eat flowers. How often do you get to eat the broccoli flower or the Napa cabbage flower or the bok choy flower? They're all in the Nebraska family. I do, I get to eat the flowers. What I should do is I should actually save these flowers for the end and we'll make this style look a little bit prettier at the end. And I'm gonna add in the New Zealand spinach, some of the fennel, the moringa leaves. I'm gonna de-stem that. And now let's wrap it all kind of like a epic spring roll wrap. And I could eat it like that, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna slice it really, really thin, really thin, because I tend to notice that if I slice it thin, then I get a little sample of each kind of green, each kind of leaf when I eat the salad. There you go, it's that simple. Now it's all diced up. Look at that assortment in there. Look at this. That is like pure vegan athlete energy. My mom gave me this bowl years ago. I love it so much because it reminds me of China. Whenever I go to China and check out their ancient museums, there's always bowls like this that are thousands of years old. I'm gonna make just a single serving for you guys for the camera. Then I'll make the rest of this when the camera's off. Let's slice up the peppers. Look at how good those look. Mm. Yep, they're sweet. 
Now I'm gonna put in a few things. One, I'm gonna put in some Bragg Liquid Aminos. I've been using this for years. I really like the, the Bragg company because of their involvement with Jack LaLanne, Patricia Bragg, I love all their stuff. Their apple cider vinegar, their liquid aminos. We're gonna sprinkle some liquid aminos on this guy. Then I've got this vinegar called Ume Plum Vinegar. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit of this sweet, amazing plum vinegar on there, just a little bit, because you don't wanna overpower it. And then, because I'm being lazy today, I'm not gonna make my own dressing. I could make my own dressing, I do make my own dressing, but today, I just got some Follow Your Heart Vegan Ranch. So you can have your ranch dressings and still be vegan. I'm not an oil-free vegan, at least not yet, but friends of mine like High Carb Hannah and others are trying to convince me to go oil-free and they're doing it with their recipes because I really think their recipes are fantastic. But so far I still eat oil, so I don't mind having this vegan ranch. Just a little bit, I don't want to overpower it. And then you guys have to come over here and join me at this tree. This tree right here is a special one. It's a Brazilian red pepper. And look at all these red peppercorns on this tree. They're all edible. And I'm going to take this mortar and pestle and inside I have some seaweed called dulce. I just bought it in a package because I don't live near the ocean. If I live near the ocean, I can go try to get my own dulce, but I just got a packaged kind, organic. And I let it dry on the counter for a few days so it's crispy and dry. And this stuff is kind of salty tasting and is high in naturally occurring iodine which can jumpstart your thyroid and improve your metabolism. So we're gonna put in some dulse in there and on top of the dulse, I'm gonna pick the red peppercorns that taste like sweet pepper. We're gonna sustainably harvest from a few different parts of the tree. And what I've noticed is that when you guys grow your own pepper and when you grind up your own peppercorns, what happens is that a lot of oil is released from the peppercorns into the, into the food and that oil, you don't normally get it when you buy the pepper that's already ground up. So I'm gonna just combine this dulse and pepper together. This is also a little bit of my pre-workout here, get warmed up. Come on, let's go, grind it. Then I'm gonna add this to the salad. Okay, I'm finished grinding it up. I'm gonna sprinkle it in there, check this out. And take my chopsticks and mix it up. What I've noticed too is if you guys prepare this like an hour beforehand and then let it kind of marinate, it's so much better. The greens absorb the vinegars and the dressings and they absorb the liquid aminos and they get more tender. So just something to think about. Let's add the flowers. Let's add the sweet peppers. Let's add the blue borage flowers. I'm all finished with the salad. I'm telling you, if you guys came to my house right now and ate this salad, it would be the most nutritious salad you've ever eaten because of the things I mentioned earlier, especially the soil and the speed at which I'm eating the food straight from the garden, straight from the crop. It's in its fresh state. Look at how beautiful that looks. Now when you guys see me in the gym or you see me doing martial arts or you see me doing anything in life on video here on my YouTube channels, you'll know what's inside my body fueling my energy, my health, and my fitness, and my vegan athleticism. And it's foods like this, straight from the garden. Let's mix all those flowers and peppers in there, and let me tell you how it tastes. Mm. That's one of the best ones I've ever made. And I added the perfect amount of dressing Every leaf is coated with it and tastes so good. Oh, and that pepper is so sweet. I gotta have one more of those. Mmm, so good. Now, really quick, to wash this salad down, my favorite appliance in my house, if you call it that, is this juice press. I'm gonna take these oranges, half of these oranges I grew in my yard, the other half, my friend down the street, one of my Tai Chi students grew the other ones. So they're all Arizona grown local oranges. Let's juice it, baby. Here, salut to you guys, to your health. Oh my God. One of the number one reasons why I'm proud to be alive is so I get to drink fresh squeezed orange juice.
It's so good. In about five minutes, I'm gonna be buzzed. I'm gonna be high. And then I'm going to a really important meeting. So I'll be sitting in the meeting totally aware and hearing all the spirits that are unable to be seen by the human eye and connecting me to the earth. Guys, food is your medicine and let your medicine be your food. This is my lunch for today. Thanks for joining me here at the Vegan Athlete channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys want more, please subscribe to my channel for gardening and vegan food ideas and inspiration and education. I've been vegan 16 years since I was 19 years old. I'm 35 now. And since I've been gardening, I've been a healthier vegan than I've ever been before. So I hope you guys, even if you're not full vegan, can do something in your life to encourage more plant foods to go in your system and grow that food at home. And I'll see you guys at my Snapchat, my Instagram, my seedbankbox.com website, or back here for my next video. Mm. Here's a bonus scene for you guys. I moved this tree trunk before the video started and there's a little anthill underneath here and there's something alive in there. I feel like Poppy. What is it? What is it going to be? I can't find it. What is underneath my ground? I'm pretty sure it's just a grub. Watch, if I move it away, it'll be a grub. A big one because they, they're pretty big. Yeah, there he is. There's the grub. <laughs> That's a good sign of healthy soil, in my opinion. When you get ants and grubs and roly polies and earwigs, it's a sign of your soil being alive and that guy does not want to be in the sun. <laughs> All right, there's the, there's the bonus scene. Thanks for watching to the end of the video.